the ocean is one of the last unexplored frontiers. Every year we discover thousands of new species, showcasing how little we know about our oceans. Interestingly, in recent years people have come forward and detailed some strange things they've encountered while exploring the oceans, and one of these came from a former National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration employee. They posted their story on Reddit, but when you try to view it it's now been taken down, and this was because the individual gave out personal and specific information that went against the guidelines. I tried to reach out to the individual that posted the story, asking if they could put me in touch with the person who told them this story, but they didn't reply, even after reaching out multiple times. As of right now there's those that believe the story and those that think it's just made up. Here's the unedited story. I'm posting this for an acquaintance that does not meet the reddit requirements for posting in this sub herself. This is not my information, nor am I in any way related to this situation or any actions taken by her. Everything beyond this point is verbatim her story as provided to me. The Navy has worked in conjunction with the government to keep this quiet on all fronts. Other governments have similar systems in place to keep this information strictly in the realm of fiction, according to public perception. I am compelled to break my silence and disseminate this information. My colleagues in the organisation I've called home for the past 12 years is responsible for keeping one of the greatest genealogical discoveries of all time quiet. The sector I work in is being restructured and downsized, so I'm going to lose my job in May. This post should expedite that process. I began my career with the redacted office located in Redacted. I hold an MS in Biological Sciences from Redacted, and a PhD in Wildlife and Fisheries Sciences from Redacted. In 2012 there was an incident of a few beach whales that were investigated by NOAA and a team from the Navy. This was very thoroughly hushed up immediately afterwards. The whales were full of perfectly circular incisions, where large chunks of their flesh had been removed, like cylinders of meat essentially. At first we thought this was done after the beaching, but we learned that they washed up this way. What really caught everyone's attention was the seared flesh around the circumference of the incisions as if they were burned out with lasers. We were all baffled as we had never seen anything like this on marine life. Then we got a call informing us that a small team would be conducting a hydrographic survey of the area, using the echo sounder of a local vessel. We typically use a technique called multi-beam sonar to scan and map the seafloor in astounding detail. The datum we collect is processed by various parties and is usually uploaded to online databases. We were told that this would not be the case for this expedition. Long story short we found irrefutable evidence of an advanced humanoid species living under our oceans. Using the multi-beam sonar, we found their dwelling areas and also what appears to be underwater vehicles of some kind. The creatures themselves were tracked by the navy over the course of two weeks using a submersible equipped with special deep sea observation equipment. The creatures displayed speeds of 70 plus knots, faster than the sailfish which is widely considered to be the fastest creature in the ocean. They were also recorded emitting sounds that resembled marine communications, and instruments also captured the emissions of precision sonar blasts that damaged the hull of the submersible. This is according to the Navy report. There is footage of the creatures including juveniles. The Navy did not share the video with us, but an officer I spoke with gave the following description. They don't look real. They look like computer animation or something. They have a glow around their entire body and they move really fast. Like even small movements like turning their head or moving an arm was like watching a high frame rate video. They look nothing like any fictional depiction out there. They do not have a fish tail. They are completely humanoid but extremely thin and tall. Their bodies were covered in a material resembling elemental mercury that looked like it was moving. 
They were very interested in the submersible, and seemed to know that they were being observed, as a few times they would swim off and then come back with more creatures. We observed at max five of them at once, varying sizes but otherwise identical in appearance. Their eyes were completely white and there was no visible hair, nor any features that implied male or female, no visible ears and their mouths were wide and lipless. We flashed sequences of lights at them, sounds and even extended a robotic arm on a submersible to try and get some kind of physical sample or DNA from the specimens or the water nearest to them. We don't know how they were swimming, as they weren't wading or moving their bodies the way a fish or even a human would underwater. They were capable of just moving rapidly in any direction, without the need to change positions or swim. In fact, during the majority of the observations, they were just floating motionless without losing or gaining buoyancy. Now, there were also crafts observed via sonar, some very large. They would move faster than anything seen capable of moving underwater. They were not seen or recorded on video just on sonar. They would at times disappear completely while being observed, as if they left the water or cloaked themselves. We have two weeks worth of data on just this one area. We were made aware that this is just one spot around the world where these creatures reside hidden from view. A briefing that I was able to read during a meeting indicated that the Mariana Trench is where the largest concentration of these creatures reside, and that they seem to be completely unaffected by the dams. Structures believed to be their dwellings units have been mapped. They are perfectly hexagonal, and joined together like a honeycomb. Their composition is unknown. The Navy confiscated most of the hard evidence, all we have are some sonar readings, that are only anomalous if you know what you're looking for. I want everyone to know this information. We are not alone, but they aren't from space. In order to exist at these depths and under astronomical pressures, these beings are either invincible, or they've evolved so far beyond us that they have some kind of technology that negates both of these dangers. This is actively being covered up by every lettered organization, and by our military. Other nations are aware of these beings, and I believe some authentic videos may even be mingled in in all of the Doctor's stuff. The sightings in Kiryat Yam were authentic. We mapped a collection of their dwellings off the coast near Cyprus Island. End quote. Time travel is an interesting topic. Although the idea of time travel is hypothetical, there's many stories that have been shared in recent years claiming that we've achieved time travel. One of these stories comes from an interesting device that's said to be held deep within the Vatican. The Vatican archives have long said to hide some of the world's biggest secrets, with some saying they hide the truth behind extraterrestrial encounters and sightings, while others say they hide the truth about Jesus. One story that caught the attention of many was when a Catholic priest admitted that the Vatican had in its possession a time travel device, and this device allowed anyone to go back to a specific time in the past and view those events. In the 1960s, a Roman Catholic monk named Father Inetti met another monk named Father Brun, and this was on a ferry ride to Venice. During the ferry ride, they discussed their own biblical interpretations, but Father Onetti said something that surprised Father Brun. He said that he didn't see the need for theories and interpretations when they had the ability to see the truth for themselves. Father Onetti claimed there was a machine that could show them what really happened during the Bible days. Father Onetti told Father Brun about a time viewing machine called a chronovisor, which looked similar to a television that allowed people to see and hear things that happened in the past. He said it finds noises and sights that were still floating around in space. Father Inetti even claimed that while using this mysterious device, he'd watched the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Years before this, while working with Father Gamelli on filtering the harmonics for Gregorian chants, they somehow heard the voice of Father Gamelli's father speaking through the wire recorder, even though he'd already passed away. 
After this, Father and Nettie couldn't stop wondering what happened to noises and sights from the past. He put together a secret team of scientists to help him figure this out. The only two scientists ever named were Wernher von Braun and Enrico Fermi. This secret team built the chronovisor in the 1950s. It allowed them to see and hear any time and place that ever existed. They not only claimed to have watched Jesus Christ but also Napoleon, along with the plays by famous Roman authors. The team agreed to dismantle the device after realising how powerful it could be in the wrong hands. No moment could ever be completely private if they could see and hear any moment in time. They also believed that if the wrong person got hold of the machine, this person could become the worst dictator to ever exist. Father Annetti was often asked for proof of the machine. He had transcribed the play Thyses and offered it as proof only to certain people. He also had a picture of Christ that he had taken a photograph of through the chronovisor. The picture shows Christ looking up while he was on the cross. However, both pieces of evidence were eventually criticised. Experts believe that the transcription of the play was too short to be a full play, as most would have been at least ten times longer than what Father Annetti had transcribed. He also included many Latin words that weren't used until around 200 years after the play. The play also seemed to be written by someone who didn't know Latin very well, even though it was the playwright's native language, leading many to believe that Father Annetti made it all up. People also noticed that the picture of Christ was the same as the picture on postcards sold at the Sanctuary of Merciful Love in Italy. The final piece of evidence that disproved Father Annetti's story was a letter from an anonymous relative. This relative claimed that while on his deathbed, Father Annetti admitted that he'd faked his previous pieces of evidence. He said he made up his own transcription of the play and that the photograph of Christ really was a copy from the postcard sold. However, he still insisted that the chronovisor was real, and that he really saw the events he previously claimed to have seen. Father Annetti never told anyone how the chronovisor was made or how it worked, so there was never any tangible evidence. Although most people always believed he was lying, Father Broom believed him. He believed that since the photos of Christ sold in the church in Sanctuary of Merciful Love were based on the descriptions of a vision and none had of Christ, both photos could have been accurate photos. He also said that if Father Annetti really made this confession before dying, he may have done so because he is threatened by the Vatican. Even though Father Annetti claims the team dismantled the chronovisor, some people believe it's still hidden away somewhere deep in the Vatican and will likely always remain a secret. One person said the following about the story. The reason we will never find out the truth about this is because it would go against the very thing they're pushing. Just imagine if you could travel back 100,000 years in the past. You've already dismantled their idea that the world is only a few thousand years old. I think a lot of people are starting to wake up to the idea that religion is built on fear and misinformation. For example, going back when the sky would rumble or the ground would shake, that was explained to the gods being angry. But now we know that these things happen because of thunder and lightning and tectonic plate movements. As humans have aged, we've increased our knowledge, allowing us to explain certain things with ease. For me, how people still look at a book that was written thousands of years ago as fact is beyond belief. How billions of people to this day still believe religion is tough to understand. Studies have shown that more people are moving forward with their belief system, instead of relying on superstition, but it's still an interesting argument that carries on in the modern day. End quote. Others have followed on from these ideas and have said the Bible was most likely a case of misinformation, and that over the years more information got added to make the story more interesting. There's some who believe that real artifacts from the past are hidden deep within the Vatican archives, and that only a few selected individuals will ever be allowed to see these. Although small sections have been opened, the large majority of the archives remain a secret. So what do you guys make of the chronovisor? 
and what's your opinion on religion? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.